we'll let Lauren get started with, you know, I assume you, you want to talk about what you start with. Uh, yeah, I thought I could introduce myself first, otherwise some sure. people are going to think there's a random Australian girl trying to talk to them. So, um, yeah, I was, <laughs> I retired maybe five years ago, but I, I was coaching men for, um, for five, five years. Um, we went from like the Division 2 in Switzerland to Division 1 around the middle of the table with a very little budget, so that was all right. And then I got taken into Nuke, where I am now, and where um, Amanda is also playing for me. Um, last year was the first season. We had a bit of luck and good timing, and we won all of the things. Um, and obviously the, the season got cut short this year, but uh, that's me. And Amanda, can I introduce you? Yes, of course. Cool. Um, I'll be calling and referring to her as Benny for this whole time because I, I don't even know who Amanda is. Yeah, um, I'm like, who is that? <laughs> she, uh, yeah, obviously, I guess a few people let them know she's a, a Team USA member. Um, she played in uh, Germany and in France the last couple of years. Um, so, and University of Oregon. So yes. I'm pretty pumped to have her in the team. Um, and it will be announced in the next 15 minutes that she's signed for the next season, which is even better. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, pretty pretty pumped to have her on the team, and I thought it was a good idea to have a player's perspective uh, for this talk, since uh, yeah, culture largely revolves around them. So, there you go. Cool. Um, yeah, what I kind of wanted to um, get out of this talk is I I believe we have a, we have a pretty nice culture here at Nuke uh, and a good environment, um, especially for players to to strive, and I think. Uh, Without this environment, it's pretty hard to achieve things bigger than the sum of your parts of your budget and your talent. So um, I do pay quite a lot of attention to it, and I do think we have a pretty good environment, so I am excited to talk about it. And today, what I wanted to get out of the talk was that um, you guys understand the cultural environment that I'm looking for, some things I pay attention to or that I believe help create the culture um, and maintain it if like any problems arise, which problems always arise. Um, so if I don't stay on track or anyone has any questions, just uh, jump in and keep me on that. Benny, you got anything at this point? Not so far. Oh, all right. Um, can I just keep going, John? Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Um, hi, Pablo. Um, okay, so culture and environment that I want, I'm just going to blurt this all out in case it sparks some questions later. Um, I guess number one, uh, I talked about this with Benny as well before. Um, it's our risky and aggressive style of play. So we really want to be playing to win, to score points. Um, I think it requires quite a lot of uh, courage. Um, you will fail. Uh, you will look stupid sometimes. Um, and I'm not interested in putting any limits on the girls. So uh, I don't really love um, when coaches or when I accidentally um, talk about managing situations and things like that. I'm, I'm pretty much go for it all the time. Some people might describe a bit kamikaze, but um, it's a, I think it's a pretty nice environment to be playing in, and I think it helps us yeah, build a little bit of resiliency. Um, you are bound to fail. We know it's going to happen. Uh, the second thing is like we're to be competitive, obviously, and hardworking um, and being able to be scrappy if you need to be. So um, I want people to be able to grow here, be their best. Um, I think that being uncomfortable is not a choice. Um, but where you experience it is. So do you want to do that in a game or do you want to do it in training? And I'm trying to get it all the time in training as much as I can. Um, then moving on to more things about environment that I think people would probably expect to hear is a, a team first thing. It's a, like prioritised relationships. So we were chatting about um, a general respect between each other. Um, don't I don't really care if the girls are friends or not um, but I, I do really care that they have a respect and understanding of everyone's kind of story and who they are um, again I don't think that you can achieve um, better than the sum of your parts if, if you don't have that respect for each other so we're, we're trying to assume best intent always and like as a coach I'm thinking about how can I cultivate that um, can we help it along and probably we can and that will be fairly discussed later um, Another thing would be the trust. So, again, we're trying to be super aggressive, like risky. Um, if we don't trust ourselves, like the process, we're, we're going to die and lose and be bad. Um, so we want to have that immense like, self-confidence and belief in, in what we're doing. Um, and I think a big part of that is understanding what you can and what you can't control. 
Um, and how do we handle it? Do we believe it? That kind of stuff. Um, good humans want to be good humans, build good humans. No dickheads up in here. Not super interested. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to trying to talk a lot about how we can be like better people um, and recruit better people and stuff like that. And probably above all else, at the end of the day, we see each other four hours a day. Um, I'd like to enjoy it. Um, maybe it's an Australian thing as I hear from a couple of the other panellists but like we're pretty jokey in nature so um, I do like to have a joke with the girls and have fun so as long as that hard working environment's established then um, I I'm, I'm really want to enjoy every every day that we, we come in and I think that's super important so I assume that Benny has a few things to add. Yeah, yeah, if I can just jump in. Yeah, for us like as a, as a team, as a whole at Nuke um, from the players' side, from the beginning of season, we, we really set, like, a standard for ourselves. And we picked three words, and we had a motto. And the three words were passion, trust, and grit. And that was kind of our standard every day. Of, like, these are the three things that we want from each of us uh, to give every single day. Um, and dream big was our motto. So we had something to look forward to at every point in our season, from the beginning to the middle to where we got cut off, unfortunately. But... Uh, just to talk about culture in a whole, like this is really what we stepped inside the gym every single day um, with it in our heads and, you know, to go off what Lauren said. And when you have that and that standard, we had the trust, we had the respect and um, yeah, especially with uh, create this creative and risky and aggressive style of play. Um, you can look really stupid sometimes in practice. And, you know, I, I was practicing setting middles as a libero and it's different. It's not traditional volleyball. And there was a trust that the hitters had to have with me and I also had to have with them, um, yeah, every single day. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, I paid Benny to come here and say nice about me. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Uh, it's part of the new contract. Uh, no, so these are things like that. <laughs> these are things I'll talk about before. Um, obviously just saying this is what you want isn't enough there's as we're going to sort of talk about throughout like the chat today there's a lot of things that try and implement or do every day um but i think if you don't put them out into the universe then you've, you've got very little chance and you're going to be catching up later so um it would be pretty well understood that this is is what we're looking for when a player comes into the team mm -hmm. so um yeah am i good just to keep going john yeah yeah cool. All right. No, no, no questions just, just yet. Cool. I've got lots of things. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I think the first thing um, when we talk about culture and environment, um, I, like we can talk about team building and all that kind of stuff. I just don't uh, necessarily think that's the most important thing. And where I'll always start is with myself. So I do think that it's a you've got to look at yourself first and, and think about the impact that you have on the environment. Um, so I, I want to be very clear and very direct i want to always like work hard and investing my time my energy into the girls um set clear expectations um i'm not necessarily fair because i don't think that's that important but i am pretty honest um so i think that yeah we've got to be looking at ourselves first and, and something that I, I do know at least differentiates me from um coaches i've played for um would be that the being vulnerable um i think a, I am human. Um, being vulnerable is like it's not a choice. It's inevitable. We're all going to be put in vulnerable situations. So, um, yeah, I do so many things wrong. It's hilarious. Um, I don't see a problem with the players knowing that or me admitting fault. Um, and also the, the, the players knowing that it's, it's okay to, to either not be okay or to do things wrong. All right. Let me inject a question here. Mm -hmm. uh, was that also your attitude when you were coaching the guys? Did you yeah. feel any differently coaching the guys? No. Okay. No. We're going to have a whole separate discussion on this in a couple of days. We are. I'm not going to go too far to, down that rabbit hole. No, I definitely had to go get there. over it. But, um, no, I, I just tried to be myself. So. All right. yeah. Good. Carry on. Um, yeah, so I, I think that sometimes we're looking for, like, the magic bullet on creating team environment and culture, but it just takes time and like a lot of shared experiences to create like trust and respect. And that's, that's pretty much the big key. So um, my goal is how do we speed it up? Um, and the only way I really can control that at all is by me being an example. So being vulnerable, being authentic and actually caring about people's developments. I, I think it creates a, an open environment and like a kind of a safer space, which is pretty important 
Benny, you got anything on these things? Um, yeah, I think it's just really important. And at this point in my career, I've played for a whole spectrum of coaches. Um, and uh, this trait of being vulnerable, um, I've seen uh, in, in two cases for me where that that line of a coach being vulnerable with their players and their team, um, it just builds that trust on a different level. Um, and I'm sure you're going to further talk about it, but yeah, just for me as a player and coaches I've been with, like this is this has been a very important factor and in success, at least for us here at Nuke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, and so like it's just everything I'm talking about. It's about things that I'm doing or acting right now at this point. Um, but it's just so important. <laughs> I just think it, it influences in the environment so much. So um, another big point that I try to do. Um, is front load everything. So full clarity. If you're coming to the team, you know what I expect. You know what your role is. Um, it's not always like nice. I'm. I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know why people keep coming here with the things I tell them that I would expect. Um, or maybe they're not going to play at all, but they do. I guess it's the honesty. But um, so I try to front load just everything and but really, really, really be honest because I, I don't want players halfway through the season sitting here going, oh, well, I, you know, I thought that I was told that I might have a chance to play if you work hard. Well, you probably won't. There's probably, you won't have a chance to play. You're here because I'll help you develop and be better. Um, don't expect to, to touch the court. Um, but it doesn't mean I don't care about you or I'm not going to help you develop. So um, that front loading um, really helps the player's expectations, which in the end, it's going to stop bad behavior. Um, I think it's just really important. Yeah. And if I can say one thing, I think also with this front loading, um, it, it helps with the player to work towards something, you know, they're not sitting there wondering, you know, in a haze, like, am I going to play? Am I ever going to play? Like, am, am I working for anything? Um, when you know right away and, and you know this kind of path that you're on, then I think it can really help. Um, yeah, I guess it's, it's, it's on that. It's just, yeah, over, I can over communicate. Um, so either I'm going to over communicate, talk to players, understand sort of what they're, where they're at, what they're feeling or things they're scared of or whatever, or I'm going to deal with really shitty behavior later down um, the track. Um, and I'd, I'd prefer to, to over communicate to start and, and, and set those expectations and just hear what players need um, to begin. Um, because yeah, it, it just, I've found that when I'm better at that, um, then I have better behaving players. So um, no surprise. Um, I guess another important thing when, when you're looking at yourself is like that, Poof, geez, the players, they know a lot. Like, they're pretty smart. Um, and I'm lucky enough to hire girls like Benny who really, like, have a lot of experience, like, doing things that I absolutely never would have done. So um, I have, a, like, a strong vision of what I'm trying to do with the team. And no, nobody's really going to take me off that path. But I am up for discussions and opinions on sort of how, how we'll get to that. Um, and, yeah, like, an example would be with, with Benny, um, we found out pretty quick that she's like very diligent in her scouting of the opponent herself. So um, we integrated it in with the, my, one of my other coaches runs the, the reception video. So um, Benny will come in with strategies and, and she'll be presenting to the team as Libro um, those strategies. And like, I mean, they're always good because she knows what she's doing. So I try to seek opinions and, and, and give like players like a, a big, um, yeah, big say when when possible without like obviously affecting my vision because that's important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, this was a really big aspect for me, um, and I knew Lauren was like this uh, from like the first time we we spoke and we started talking about volleyball. Um, I was super fortunate to play for another coach who uh, liked their players to be very vocal and and um, I in college also ran our own. Uh, reception and so being able to do this and be creative and use my what I see in scouting and also along with our um, other staff member who was in charge of uh, scouting reception just talking about it and be like hey I see this and um, I would run our our uh, reception meetings for the upcoming game and really could use my knowledge as well as theirs to create these um, these uh, personalized like uh, scouting plans of what we were going to do and I think this as a player is really cool it's not a coach just telling you hey this is what I see and I didn't put that much time or something into it and that's what we're going to do it was it, it's really hard work from their side and my side and being able to be part of that 
uh, process as a player was really cool and to see that they had that trust in me was was a really fun uh, uh, aspect to be a part of. Yep, and yeah, I keep I keep coming back to it, but it sounds like this is just about coach player relationship, but it's it really just creates an overall environment and a trust between everybody, and it's very important. So. Um, uh, another thing, uh, uh, something before I always... Yeah, before we move yes. on, Lauren, just a quick thing, because since you're, you're kind of talking on the coach stuff, mm -hmm. when you talk with the club management mm -hmm. about, you know, how you want to run things, mm -hmm. how much uh, of what you end up, you know, kind of building into your culture comes from, you know, the, what the club wants to do, you know, because clubs can have their own culture and their own vision of things, and how much is driven by, okay, this is this is my way of doing things. This is the way I want to do it. You know, whether that's kind of like your negotiation with them in the beginning or is the ongoing discussion. Yeah. I mean, in this particular case, like their big, the big philosophy of Nuke is that they want to play with as many um, local players as possible um, and win as much as possible. So um, beyond that, um, they don't care. And that I had asked that um, I have like a big say in, in a lot of these things. So um, when they were hiring me, um, I, I'd said that there are a lot of things in the culture I want to change and like listed a bunch of things. Um, as long as I stick with these guidelines, play with the less foreign as possible, most Swiss players possible. Um, and they're pretty happy and they're very, very supportive. So I like know that I thrive better in an environment like that um, where I am able to um, have an influence over, over this culture as well. So um, I'm, I'm pretty lucky to be in a club that, that um, has like handed that over to me. So. Well, I take it that was part of your decision to go there as you knew. Okay, yeah. oh, they're gonna they're gonna let me do it. Yep, yeah, for sure. I mean, it was it made it pretty attractive to leave leave the the job with the boys, like which was not an easy choice, but but yeah, so, yeah. for sure. All right, cool. Good. Um, yeah, so another big thing there is like um, the consistency of behaviour. So I've stolen this. I steal everything from everybody. So but I stole this from another friend of mine. Trust is consistency of behavior like I want to be consistent in my behavior I am not always because I don't know bad days and get cranky um but um if it's ongoing um I, I will tell the players that that's it's something they can expect from me is for me to be pretty consistent in my behavior and should I not be then I should be called out um which I have been and the players will do um in a very respectful way so um but I like that because I'm doing the same thing to them so um yeah I don't know if you want to Benny on the example on that or not? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm a type of player that for sure is is also similar and I'm pretty brutally honest and I'm kind of blunt and I, if I see something, I just say it. Um, and there's for sure been times where maybe I was like a little stressed out or feeling frustrated and, you know, it's Lauren comes to me and it's like, hey, like what's going on? Um, just stuff like this. And it's like a snap, like, yeah, okay. Like I'm back in. Um, but yeah, just... Like the same, like you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, this year I was like, I don't know, it was two weeks of I was just being a cranky shit. I, I was probably just feeling a lot of extra pressure that I usually try and ignore. Um, and one of the, one another girl come up to me and was just like, um, Lauren, look, uh, you, you've been a little cranky these last couple of weeks. And I was like, oh, shoot, there you're on. And, and, and what, I, what I do affects everybody else. They get tense. They, they like, they, they get Hey, it's harder for them to perform because I, I do affect the environment. So I just, in one of our video meetings, I just apologized before that and said that like, yeah, I'll, I'll just be better. Like, and I don't know if I said why or not. I don't know if it really matters because there's no really excuses, but um, I think it just diffused a lot of tension also for myself. So, which is, I guess, a part on being vulnerable. You, you can set these expect, expectations and standards that you're still human. So if you, if you do mess it up, then it's probably good to let people know. Yeah. And another thing is we're, we're together so much. I mean, we're together four plus hours a day. Um, and if you're feeling like somebody is a little off, it's, you're probably right. Um, because you, you start to really kind of sync together as a team. Um, especially for us, we were on kind of a different level, um, in that aspect. And, you know, when it was like this, you know, you have, we had that accountability between players and coaches to say something, you know, it doesn't have to be in front of everyone. It's pulled to the side or, Hey, like, yeah, what's going on? Um, stuff like this. And that was really an important thing for us because you will hit those lows in a season. And when you can take care of them right away, it, it helps you to keep going up instead of stay, stay down. 
Yeah. And like last year, we it was my first game of coaching Nuke was the Super Cup. Yeah. Um, and it was my first game ever coaching to win anything whatsoever, yeah. like medal wise. So I, I got a little nervous uncharacteristically. I'm not, I don't usually get too nervous. Um, and I, I was talking to the girls about like, I don't, I don't remember what I was talking about. And again, the, this was last year. My, my captain then pulled me aside and said, Lauren, you just said Super Cup 15 times in one minute. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you're right let me just calm that down a little bit so yeah and it just I mean it helps me because sometimes you just don't know what you're doing so I want to be able to have that um that accountability there like on things that I think are important so um yeah cool um, you see Ricardo's comment <laughs> as buddy because you had to be the head coach no I'm kidding I'm just <laughs> sorry babe um yeah <laughs> Uh, yes, I was nervous before. All right. Um, so as, uh, one thing, like, because I've, I've still got a million things that I, I want to talk about, but one thing that I think I'm always going to relate back to when people, if anyone asks me, like, what to, um, what do you do when this happens? Like, um, I always refer back to this. We have, like, individual meetings every week, and I know that that would not be uncommon for programs to have individual meetings, but um, I would say this way is probably not that common. Um, and... Yeah, I started doing them probably into my, my third season with the guys. Um, I always put myself that I thought I was a pretty good communicator um, and I was always like pretty open for people to, to speak to me um, and then I had some feedback at the end of that season that, um, you know, yes but no for certain people, whether it be a language, um, whether it be they're just intimidated, wouldn't like also have to work on other things. Um, uh, that I was not as like accessible as I would want to be and that I'm missing out on a lot of things if that's the case So at the same time I was listening to a business podcast I don't know what podcast it is have no idea But they were saying about the way they structure some meetings that really helps um, buy in from their from their team so I do individual meetings weekly with the girls um, and the format is um, it's a 10-minute block they have five minutes where they can speak about whatever they want and like when I mean whatever they want I mean whatever they want like I do not care if they walk in and tell me girlfriend or boyfriend problems or um they have a straight up crack at me for something I've said to them or didn't play them or just like they've got five minutes to blurt out whatever they want and my goodness do I have some stories but um but my like goal or what I told them before when we made these meetings is that I will not like defend myself in those five minutes, I'm not going to like um, have any judgment or I'm, I'm really just going to listen, take it in um, and hear what you need me to hear. Um, then I will have five minutes after that if I have anything to say. Um, so often, you know, if it's an easy week, we don't have games or I don't know, nothing's been happening. The meetings can go pretty quick. Some people come in and talk about volleyball. Some people have some problem at home. They just don't want to talk about it and they blurt it out because they're there. Um, and I think that, it's so important that I'm accessible to the players. Um, and the reason I think it helps the environment a lot is because um, if they do have problems, which they do, um, and as nice as I think I am, um, I don't always come across like that and or I, I might get things wrong. Um, they always know that they have a weekly meeting um, that they can speak to me in. So, like, I've even had feedback before that of a player that was pretty angry she didn't play. We'll talk about that later. But... Then she waited. She was like, well, I speak to Lauren in three days. I'm going to bring it up then. Until then, I'm just going to continue working um, and continue, like, um, pushing and doing what I need to do. Uh, and, yeah, I think it really helps them knowing that, like, they can sit down. They don't have to worry about what I think. I will tell them in that meeting. They will hear, honestly, um, what I'm thinking. Um, so I think it's really valuable. I just know that if it was implemented poorly, it would be really invaluable because all you'd be doing is if you are getting defensive in those meetings then you're just going to stop people coming in and giving feedback so um and that's what it's for and um, over time it gets better like last year's meetings went way longer because i was built it was my first year there and i was building more the culture this year they, they got a lot easier um because people knew me and knew what we expected and things like that so uh yeah amanda yeah, and just for reference, uh, I just want to talk about how I use the weekly meetings as a player. Um, the platform was really cool. Like, you could go in there, like Lauren said, and talk about whatever. But for me, I um, kind of used it more of a, like, week-to-week -week thing, like what I wanted to either focus on or where I felt like I was struggling if we 
and they're normally at the meet, uh, the beginning of the week. So whether we had a game or we just practiced, um, I kind of reflected on that game or week of practice and uh, kind of talked about where I felt strong and where I felt like I needed to work. Um, and that's how I used the meeting, but it was really cool to just be like, hey, can you watch out for this this week? I'm working on uh, my arms or just tracking, uh, just kind of like a week, week, week check-in. And it was really, it was really different for me. I never had that um, up till now. Yeah. Lauren, can I ask how you, how you set the schedule these meetings, how you structure them? Because uh, I know you must have a combination of people like Amanda, who's the full-time professional. So you've got her basically 24 seven, Yeah. but you've got local players who maybe have jobs, school, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yes, I would be on the luckier side in Switzerland where I have like more, most of my players are at all trainings and are pretty available. So, um, but the ones with like, yeah, we had a couple with school who maybe couldn't do it just before. We'd, I try to do them on Tuesday because usually we come back Tuesday because we play on Sunday um, and she might be arriving at 5.30 for a six o'clock training. So she would just be scheduled after. But as a general rule, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty available for all the girls were pretty available. And with the guys, it was really just like quick, quick in before training, maybe before a morning training after like it. I, but actually, that's a good point that you say that. Um, it's the same time every week. We try it to be, unless, um, and right. in Nuke it's a little harder because sometimes we have Wednesday games, sometimes we don't if we have European Cup, so we do have to be flexible. But with the guys, it was like absolutely Tuesday at 5.15, I'm talking to this guy like every week. So, And I think it's better um, yeah. that way. But, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we can insert this one here. Matthew has a question wondering whether you've ever had a player say something to you that made you second guess some of the things that you do? And if so, how you handled that? Um, yeah, like all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, I, again, like I, I really, really, really try to like take all feedback like seriously, because what if I'm, what if there's a different perspective I'm missing? So um, I, I, maybe I'll come back to some examples later. It might jump in my head, but um, yeah, for sure. Like not necessarily questioning anything like philosophical or vision wise or things like that, but maybe, um, some sort of things we've been doing in training or like, um, oh yeah, maybe for example, we, somebody, we might not have focused on hitting much this week cause we were trying to get our blocking better. Um, and as we know, if we don't focus on something, usually we get worse at it. So, um, um, the player might come in and talk about the performance and I'd be talking about, um, okay, in the game you struggled at this, this, and she would be like, oh, I just didn't hit a lot this week. And I'm like, oh, you're right. So, like, uh, you know, just general things like that. But, yeah, I don't know if that's answering his question really, but I will we'll have a uh, have a. You can clarify if you must do. Um, but it sounds to me like for the, for the most part, unless I'm misunderstanding, mm -hmm. there's nothing that really alters or shakes your basic philosophy mm -hmm. and the way you want to do things. It's more about certain application of things along the way correct i like I, I i just don't think i'd survive if i if i um yeah if i wasn't consistent on, on what we want it to look like as a general rule whether it be environment or gameplay or all these kind of things so um i know where i'm going with that but geez i'm, I'm a pretty young coach i know that there's different ways to do things so i'm, I'm always trying to figure out a better way to get there so okay Good. okay um, yeah, so they're, they're the individual meetings and I think that they are, they really create less anxiety in the team and people just aren't wondering what I'm thinking. I know when I played that that was a pretty tough thing for me sometimes. So, um, I don't want people thinking like that. Um, cool. Uh, yeah. So the next thing I want to talk about was like, um, which I think was a question that someone submitted in Slack as well, was uh, maintaining the style of, um, play and our aggression, um, I do really think that it's a big part of our culture. If anyone comes into the gym, you can see really quickly that we're trying to play or we are playing um, a, an aggressive style of volleyball, sometimes to many people's opinions are fault. So, um, but uh, it's for me really important. And I, again, start by front loading everything. So I, it's not something that I walk in and then just like, okay, we're going to do this. Like we'll sit down and we'll talk that, um, because that's, we can talk about this with the girls and the boys, but that's a bit, a bit of a difference is that this front loading is even more important. Um, I like that 
we, we will not beat teams that are better than us if we're playing it safe. Um, we're going to have to, like, score points um, to beat those teams better than us. Can we beat bad teams? Yes, we can. Not that important. At the end of the day, we need to be beating the good teams, so we want to be playing this style all the time. Um, so I front load that, that we will want to be risky. We're Honestly, we're going to lose some games because of it, and I have we did last year. I'll talk about that. Um, Sometimes we're going to look really silly. Um, um, we'll just have a little laugh. It's okay. Um, here we go. This is the, the mentality I want. Um, yeah. It turned out last year it worked out pretty well. We we were very clearly fourth in the in the season. Um, we went to five with a lot of teams we shouldn't go to five with because of our insane amount of errors. Um, but you know we got better at, at being aggressive and at exactly the right time with also some luck. Um, we found ourselves in the final and winning it all. So, um, and there we weren't making any errors, surprisingly, just because we didn't talk about it at all. So, um, yeah. So I don't know if any of you have anything on this or. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just about playing aggressive. Um, yeah. And front loading that we, we as a team, like talking about playing aggressive, we know that we will make a lot of errors or we'll hitting or attacking or serving out or whatever. But for us, like, us knowing that and playing that way every single day, um, not only does it build trust and that we we don't get mad about people making five or six hitting errors, um, and overall in the environment, it created less anxiety for players, young players especially, um, way less anxiety and pressure when it came to games um, because we knew what we could do and we knew we were going for it. Um, yeah just from a player standpoint. Yep. Yeah, there's two, two things that maybe you can touch on. And the player side of it, maybe you, you'll get to uh, a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, just in terms of we know what player self-talk is like because <laughs> we've all been there. You know, as much as your teammates are, say, you know, are completely supportive of being aggressive and making mistakes, it's not a big deal. We're still beating ourselves up on the inside. Um, so how do you help players, you know, kind of through that? And the other side of it is from a coaching perspective, um, what are you doing to make sure that you don't inadvertently contradict, you know, the, 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 the philosophy? Mm -hmm. It is really easy for coaches to, to preach, be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive, but then do something or say something that, spins it completely the opposite direction and causes the team to start getting conservative or worrying about making stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'll answer the coaching one first, I guess. Yeah. That's it. Um, uh, I like, poof, I just believe in it so deeply that I really would so very rarely contradict myself. Benny, would you agree with that? Or yeah, not? for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I like. I truly, truly, truly believe um, uh, that it is the best way to be. So I like impose a no limit mentality. If I hear another coach or another player in the in the gym saying anything to do with like kind of playing it safe, I'm just not interested. I don't want a plan B when you go to attack. Like, okay, the ball's tight. You whacked it into the block. <laughs> don't care like um i want to teach you how to get your feet there and maybe like slam the ball down play a bit more men's volleyball in that way um rather than like talk about um th there's just like i want to score that point how are we going to do it um and i i believe so deeply in it that i would rather and i we have like lost games because of it than um than uh than say anything against it because if you get it right my god you are good so um, if you can become a team that can, you're five metres off the net and you just you feel free to have a swing when there's no block up, you will score that point. And um, we, we ended up being a team that can do that a lot of times and it's very frustrating um, to play against, I think. So I, I just, I believe in it so much that um, we might be in a game... <laughs> 
many games, I mean, the last game, I think, geez, I think we played four sets. One of the sets was to maybe under 15 and we, we served 23 errors. And every time we served the error, the crowd was like, oh, and I was just like, <laughs> like I was laughing, like, because it doesn't matter. Like we, we won the game so very clearly serving 23 errors because either we were acing them, either we were erroring them or either they were so far off the net, I couldn't do anything with the ball. I just don't care. So I, I really like don't think that I contradict myself at all um, because I believe in it more than I would imagine most people do. A uh, quick, quick suggestion for people, and maybe somebody knows who, which match this was, but in the NCAA tournament, I believe it was last year, there was a situation where first ball got shanked off the court, Libro chases it down, pretty sure it was Libro, sets it back into the middle of the court. Just big old high ball about 15 feet off the net. Outside hitter goes up and hammers it, hammers it. And the ball had come like, you know, 35 feet to get to her in the first place and scores. And it was just like, if you don't understand volleyball, you don't understand how hard that really was to mentally to be that aggressive and technically to actually do it. You know, look that up. You know, if, if you know what match I'm talking about, post it in the chat. But no, I mean, that's no, just, yeah. just, just like go forward attitude. Let's try to score the point when we got the when we have the the, the opportunity. Yeah, I, like that's say. totally what we're doing. And like I, I mean, I have two examples on either end with the same player, Tia Scambray, if anyone knows her. Um, she's learned how to be super aggressive. Um, and one like I, it was, yeah. I don't know if it was cup final or not, but it was a really important time. And she went up with four metres off the net and just ripped it down the line and, like, the whole stadium just went quiet. So I was just like, oof, okay, why'd you try that? But then there was another time this year um, that she had no look. She turned, ran around, jumped, like, was looking the other side and hit 25 metres out into the, 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 into the, the stands. And, like, she just turned around to me and I was like, okay. Like, honestly, like, T is so good at it now that she's going to hit four out of five of them in. And, Nobody on the team said anything to her or even had any reaction. They were just like, okay, well, she misjudged that one, but that's okay, you know. So we probably I think we left, left, honestly, we did. We did. Oh, yeah. I think maybe. <laughs> so I think that we've we've developed a good uh, a good mentality there, and um, yeah. I, so I just don't impose limits, and I, I just think it's it's it um, human nature, um, especially. It's, and it is a little bit more with the, with the girls and the boys, like that they they will take the safer option if they think there's one. So um, I don't want to give them a safe option. There are no safe options. Score the point when you can. That's it. Um, yeah. So yeah. And I guess another part on maintaining. Oh, do you want to? What was the other question? You want to answer? What do I need to talk? Self talk. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk yeah, about self talk later for sure. If you want okay, to do that's, it. That's but, what I thought. Yeah, you can hold that for later because I know you oh, got yeah, you got some player <laughs> stuff coming up. All right. We'll yeah. uh, but but to that point, just in terms of of not limiting things. One of the things that completely drives me crazy, and I used to hear this from high school coaches all the time, mm-hmm. I would talk to them about, you know, why aren't you working on running a fast offense with your team? Mm-hmm. Oh, we don't pass well enough. What do you mean? Who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> if, you don't teach, if you don't teach them to run a fast offense, they have no reason to pass well. They yeah, can pass I mean, the yeah. meter line all day if all you're going to do is eyeball. Yeah, for sure. So don't, don't put restraints, as you say. There's yeah, no, no need for it. And I'd rather hard get enough paid. dealing with the kids that are putting restraints on themselves. Yeah, don't exactly. put them, don't add them by, you know, by what you're doing. Yeah. And this, I've, so I've, I was coaching like a, a running a talent school, which is like basically a development center in Switzerland for like higher level young athletes. And it was not any different. It was the same philosophy. So I, I don't change it. It doesn't, it doesn't change from, from where, what I'm coaching. Um, and I'd rather have players that know how to do, those kind of things play fast while they warm and be aggressive and not when they come to me. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Um, yeah. Another thing on maintaining the style of play is like we, we always, I mean, everyone says it, everyone knows it, but I don't know that everyone does it that well still is competitive practices. So I think every drill honestly has to be competitive. Um, almost everything we do is competitive. If it's not competitive, um, a, I try to have a really big learning focus. Um, and like a really big goal from it. And if I don't, it's terrible um, immediately. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's something that's super important. And, and I think we're, I'm, I'm fairly, we're fairly good at like always competing in practice um, and just, yeah, going after it. Um, so, 
Yeah. All right. Well, related to that, and this is this is a mark related question, so you'll you'll probably know where it's coming from. Okay. Um, if you're competing all the time, how much are you doing that starters, non-starters, mixed? Mm -hmm. And if you have to do starters, non-starters, because you want to work at, for example, mm -hmm. how do you adjust to make make things competitive? Uh, okay, so I ideally like not so much. Um, I, I if I have um, a healthy squad of fourteen, then I mix more often than not because again, I yeah, I want them to go after it. I want my best hitters to hit against the best walkers and and bring all the other players up. So I don't do a lot of starting six versus non-starting six. However, um, this year, for example, um, we had just a bunch of injuries thrown at us pre-season that we couldn't like we had an ACL and it was on a local girl so we didn't want to bring an extra foreigner in so like we we were we were we were down on players a little bit so I sometimes bought guys in um which I don't always love but it's okay um uh, and then we then I would probably do a little bit more um starting six work in that case but generally I don't I try not to do too much um and I don't know how the players feel about that honestly but I told yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, we're mixed a lot more than we are kind of the A side, B side type of thing. Um, just to get even our best hitters, I get to uh, go dig them on the other side and make them mad every day. So that was fun for me. Um, but yeah, it's it's nice the way that we had it set up, and and still it it's competitive. Like it's it's it was better that way. Also, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or like if, if for example, I wanted maybe the setter to really work with these particular hitters, which were our starting six hitters, then like what I would do is just put Benny on the other side. So she has to get out there and just ball out and dig them. And as, as much as I can, I don't really do a lot of A versus B. Yeah, and it didn't change. Like whether we had this A side, B side thing or we were mixed, the competition level didn't alter in any type of way. It was still extremely competitive for us. Yeah, yeah. The amount of times the B team beat the A team when I actually did it, and it's just like that, you know. So we yeah. want it, yeah. want it to be like that. So, yeah. uh, cool. All right. So I don't know if that's kind of all those things on the style of play and that that culture around that. Um, and yeah, <laughs> moving into more things that I I tend to watch out for on a daily basis. Um, like, which would what's up talk is going to be one of them. So um, I think it's just, especially when you're building a culture the first time or you, you're building a team and building your environment, if you're not on top of these things, um, they will grow and not in a good way. So anything that under the big blanket of it might infect somebody else's mindset or um, a player can't focus on their job very well, um, um, anything that <laughs> my answer would be, it's just not about you. Um, uh, that kind of behavior, um, I will just like bop it on the head pretty quickly, whether that be, um, with someone who like Benny, who is, um, who's played under some, you know, in some good programs, she's done a lot of like this learning about mindsets and, and self-talk and stuff. So all she needs is a little, Hey Benny, you okay? And she's like, Oh yeah, I'm all right. Or like, what's up and then usually it ends there with her and, and like it's not that she's being bad she just might be a little bit internal and we just might need her not to be like that for that moment um it just is like a little bit like that or whether it's in an individual meeting a far deeper conversation um about what it means and how it's probably affecting your teammate and even more importantly how it's affecting your performance um because ultimately we are still here to develop ourselves as well um and you're not going to go very far if you've got like you know, in bad body language or poor self-talk um, and stuff like that. So anything like that, um, I'm fairly quick on it, um, especially for players that are uh, new. So if I don't know you, um, then I will get to know you and I will get to know you by asking you what's going on. I'm not walking up to you berating you for that behaviour. Usually it's there's never really bad intentions behind things. So um, I'll, I'll have a quick conversation. But as I get to know a player more and know maybe their moods and, and things like that, then um, I'll be a little bit um, not lenient, but, like, I'll know how much it affects the team or not um, and I'm, I'm sort of better able to gauge that. So then, like, this year, I, I honestly didn't have to do it too much. Last year I, it would be a daily thing where I was, like, on top of it. Okay. Uh, next, I had a question come in from Liam mm -hmm. for Amanda. Uh, does Amanda have any examples of how the team self-regulates behavior? Yeah, I think it was every day. I mean, and it can also go back to this whole self-talk thing. Um, like me personally, I've had conversations with 
teammate about self-talk and I know she was getting really hard on herself and um, in a morning practice I pulled her aside we were kind of passing together we went to go watch the the replay video and I just said hey like the stuff you're saying to yourself like it's not helpful at all like let's let's be let's talk better ourselves. like just to be more aware of it you know and 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 just having that conversation of like hey what you're putting out there it can really affect other people um so the same way that lauren is you know bopping it on the head i think player to player for us we did the same thing um we noticed right away if somebody was down um and whether they're you know doing whatever and and got really on it really fast um i saw this on I wouldn't say every every single day, but we're doing that um, consistently throughout the season. Well, I think the respect thing you brought up, Lauren, at the beginning, it plays a huge part in that. Because if you if all the players know that they respect each other, you can be critical in a respectful fashion. For sure. Now, if you yeah, if you're being snarky and and all that, and it, and it and it comes off that way, that's you know obviously that's not going to create any positive vibes. Yeah. If, I, yeah. It's just like it's building it, you know, like last like last year at the start, like nobody, the team wasn't self-regulating that. They, they didn't know really what that meant. Um, they didn't know what was important. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it hasn't always been this good. Um, but now it is because, like, I try to make a really big point about how important it is, you know, and then um, players understand that. They're smart. I get players in like Benny who already know that, who can help me with that. And then ultimately, like like Liam sort of said, the team does self-regulate. I don't have to do anything. What a wonderful world. But, like, it doesn't start like that, you know. So you've got to be pretty active on it to begin. So Yeah, and one more thing for us, like, it, and it wasn't just one voice, you know. A lot of teams you have a captain and, and they're the person who's – Always, you're hearing that voice over and over again. They're kind of that person that regulates the behavior and, and calls calls it out. But for us, it was countless times where top to bottom, somebody's saying something like, hey, like, let's pick it up. Like, this is this is not good right now. Um, our touches are really sloppy. Like, let's, let's uh, you know, refresh and start over. That was happening from everyone um, on different days. So we didn't just have that one person doing it. We had everyone doing it. So it just this full-on accountability all the way around. Yeah, right. and that, it's really important to know that it just it hasn't always been like this. This is something that's been developed, and now it is, and that's fantastic. And as much as I can keep keeping players, which we have a nice environment and we, we can compete so they, they want to be here, then um, that will continue to grow. Um, so it just it took a lot of work to start. Like nobody would be talking at the beginning of last season, um, but, you know, here we are now and, like, Nobody even really needs to be talked to anymore. So it's 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 good, but it, it doesn't. It's not just like a magic environment that I've found myself in. So. Yeah. Well, that, that, that it brings up two questions for me. First mm -hmm. is how long did it take that first year for you to get them to the point where they could self-regulate, or at least where they had a pretty strong indication of what the expectation was and, and what you were trying to to accomplish. Probably like thirty-five seconds before the finals. <laughs> it felt like. <laughs> So um, if I'm being honest, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty close. Like, yeah, I mean the whole, the whole environment that I'm trying to build, like it, it, it was like, it was there um, um, and it was coming, but like it was so up and down because we were all new. I didn't know anybody. Um, I hadn't coached women before, honestly, not head coach anyway. But, um, and yeah, it was just all kind of new for me. So, and for the girls and a lot of them, I don't think, well, I have certainly haven't been coached by any coaches in Europe. Sorry if any of you are watching that, that really care about this. Um, so I, it's not something that I like can imagine the girls had heard that much before, which is also later when I talk about recruiting, why I tend to take um, more Americans than not. So we'll talk about that a bit later. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the second question I was going to have is is related to that, um, and you can you can push it off if you want to. It was just um, how you use the the returning players, and obviously in the case of somebody like Benny, the mm -hmm. players that you recruit um, to make it easier the second year. Yeah. To bring you know bring the new players up to which, yeah, where um, you want the, the whole the whole squad to be. Yeah, I, I I can yeah talk about it now. Um, we'll touch on it later. But like, yeah, it's for me, it's 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 so important. I use them so much. <laughs> so um, if I have a, a returning player and um, they've they've sort of understood what we're looking for, um, you know, sometimes it's not always my voice that's the best. Um, I don't know, as much as I'd like to think it would be, it's just not. 
So um, I know that those girls are able, certain players are able to have conversations with other players that, that or just like, like Benny said, like touch on things when, when they go to watch video or stuff like that. So I, I actually use them a lot. One example this year would be um, with Benny that um, we were, yeah, honestly we were dragging us a little bit for a week and um, just wasn't great and I was like, just trying to pump us up and get get things moving and be motivated and you know it's a long season and I just um I pulled Benny in and I just asked her opinion um first she sort of said something that was similar to what I was thinking and then she hadn't she was new this season hadn't really said too much but has a lot of respect from the girls um because of the way she acts um and I just asked her to just maybe say something quickly to the team um and she did don't know what it was because I wasn't there and it was literally maybe 30 seconds, but just stuff like that. I'll definitely, I'll definitely do if I think it's necessary. And it's nice to have the trust um, that I know what the players are having my back there. Okay. <laughs> Melena wants to know how you choose your captain and what your expectations are from that role. Can I talk about that later? Sure. You, cool. you may. All right. Yeah. Cause that's, um, that's something for sure that I have. Okay. Um, Carry on. But- Okay, the next, the next thing we kind of wanted to, to touch on was the bench player management because um, uh, at the end of the day, people want to wanna play. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> unhappy, <laughs> players, unhappy players don't usually behave very well. So, like, I, I can't keep everybody happy. I'm under no illusions that I can. Um, but I, I definitely um, can have a pretty big influence. So, for me, like, as a general rule, like, um, being a team that's quite good in the league, I do have chances to play my bench sometimes, so I will do that when I can, just because the girls play so much, there's so many games, the league goes for freaking eight months that um, if I can get some other girls' games, then I will. So there's that, and that's one point, um, which I think is important. Um, I want to keep players motivated. Um, um, but the, the, the big point for me is that um, it's really setting the expectations and then how to manage it. So as I said before, I front load everything. So if I have a player that I'm recruiting um, that I don't think will play, then I will tell them, you, you're not coming here to play this season. Um, no matter how hard you work, um, it's not what you should be expecting. It won't happen. Um, can we continue the conversation? Yes, great. But what I can give you is um, like, and one, I have one really big example. Um, I don't know if she's watching. Julie, um, but we, we've been through a lot together, but like I, I recruited her um, from a team where she was pretty unhappy um, and not playing. And I recruited her last year to not play also, but um, obviously to eventually play. So I, I, I said to her that like, um, I'll help her fix her arm swing. I will um, you know, make her love volleyball again um, and just make, turn her into a better player. But like, if she has any expectations of, of being on the court, then she needs to go somewhere else of which she had many offers because she is like a big talent um, came to me surprisingly. So, um, and even though I had set the expectation, I was really, really honest about what um, her expectation would be at the end. It's just not enough um, <laughs> because it's not for everybody. So um, it, it takes like constant communication. And I, I reached out to her and like asked her just for the purpose of this talk, like, okay, we, we didn't lose trust. You, you trusted me. You're still here. Now she's a starter for me. Um, what, what did I do? Like, what, how, how'd that, how'd that work? Like, why, why did you keep trusting me? Um, and it was a mix of, um, I did stick by my word. So I was really continually to help her with the arm swing, fix it, like develop her, um, turn her into a better player, um, constant communication. So she could come into the meetings, even if she was like a bit upset, um, for two days, she knew that she would have a meeting with me. She would come in, she could talk about it. And often just talking about it helps it a lot more. Um, I have absolutely no problem justifying myself to a player um, as well, which I think that, I don't know, I don't think that everyone's the same as me. Like, of course, I'd I'd rather them not be angry and understand the expectations I have, but at the end of the day, I make choices. Those choices have reasons behind them, and if I can't explain those reasons, then I'm probably doing something wrong. So um, if she would come in and, okay, well, we lost. I didn't play. I think I'm good enough. I'd be like, well, no, you're not, and here's why, and these are the statistics, and this is what's happening, but um, this is what we're doing to get you up to standard. So that's that, you know, and it was just like being very honest um, and having sort of that consistent (laughs) 
discussion because I don't like when players come in and, and say to me, um, okay, well, you, you didn't play me, so you don't trust me. It's like got absolutely zero to do with trust. Trust is like about my consistent behaviour, not about whether I put you on the court or not. And, and it's just like working through that constantly. So there's no magic bullet. It's just a bunch of conversations. Um, and eventually, like it, some, for some people, it goes faster than others. But, um, yeah, with her and... I have permission to not throw it under the bus here. Um, with her, it took a bit longer, but like we have a really good relationship now, and and uh, we always did. But uh, and now she's yeah, she has turned into a starting player. So if she was right to trust in her process, and it did turn turn into the right thing. Benny, do you have yeah. anything on that? Yeah, I guess I just have something to say on um, this idea, just like checking in on bench players as a starter. Um, I have more experience as a starter than I do on the bench, but I still do have experience on the bench, uh, especially with national team. But I do have experience with creating a healthy relationship between um, positions. And for our second libero, Romina, I just really wanted to work with her side by side and not something where it's like, okay, you're below me or something like this. Um, so just like really like checking in and, and letting her know that I'm there for her um, for advice or for help or to push her when she needs it. Um, but also to let her know like um, that I need her just as much as she needs me. And she is my second eyes um, when we play. Um, and I think when it is front loaded by the coach um, and people do know their role, there isn't space for this type of like toxic stuff where you get jealousy and, you know, like, things like this between positions. Um, we just didn't experience that because as a coach, Lauren did a good job in front loading all of us um, in the beginning and uh, giving us our roles. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's something that I, I really like what she said is that um, when like players are, are kind of supporting it, I mean, it's a magic world. I mean, I, honestly, two of my players in the same position last year definitely hated each other. So one of them has gone now. So there we go. But um, it's not always like working that well. But um, I do want it to be um, the case that, like, they can work together, whether it be in the game or training and things like that. So I, I, I haven't worked out, like, what I'm actually doing that makes that happen, but I do let people know that I do want that to happen and try to, to remind them during games and things like that and give them space to, to be able to do that. So um, I don't know if there's anything more I can do than that, but it is important and it, it really it helps because, like, you know, if we put the bench player in, like everyone's just really pumped for them. They're just like, yes, let's go do this, you know, whether like they get a chance, they, they jump in, they're like, I, I have never, as I have probably felt as a player, looked at the coach like, what the shit are you doing putting that girl in? Are you kidding me? Like I haven't had that reaction yet, thankfully, um, because people just trust like, again, like the, the overall process that we're trying to do. And if I'm putting someone in, it might be, it's for usually a good reason, even if it's not to like just to try and win. However, when we do need to make that change to try and win, um, more often than not, like we're more successful than less because like the players like embracing that player and pretty pumped about it, like and like ready and like know what to expect and and that communication helps out a lot, I think. Yeah, this was vital for us. Um, we had bench players that came in at like really important times where we needed we needed something to happen and they came in and, and we won these games. Um, but I've also been a player that, you know, I'm, I'm on the court and the coach makes a change and I'm thinking like, what the hell? Like what is about to happen right now? We don't even know. It's a toss up. But uh, this season, for sure, it was more of a like, okay, let's go, like a pump up thing. Like we were, we were ready. We were fully behind them. They knew that, and they, they, they then had the confidence that they knew they could do their job. You know, um, yeah, just going. On. Yeah, honestly, like I don't know if Benny even notices it, but the amount of times before I make a sub and she's sitting on the bench, and I'll be like, Benny, I'm gonna put this girl in. Remind her this, help her that. Don't freak her out. She'll be okay. You know, and like. So part of that is like that Benny can help her out. The other part is like, hey, Benny, I'm not crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> like this is what I'm doing. So support, support me with it because Benny's a, a pretty good player and knows what she's doing. So, um, so yeah, that was mm -hmm. that's something that I would tend to do. Um, okay. A coaching point and then maybe a player point, but also has coaching implications. Uh, uh, what you talked about in terms of trust and that relationship with the player. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the bigger challenges in coaching is those players who think that you don't like them because mm -hmm. you don't play them or you, you know, you play them in a different role or 
something mm -hmm. along those lines. So how do you, how do you work through that? Um, that, so that, when that happens, it's usually more of a personality thing than it is, um, about that I haven't played them or something because honestly, like I cannot remember a time that I've not been completely deathly like honest about what their role will be. Um, and they usually can't, that can't come back to haunt me too bad then, but it's more, it'll more be like, I'm, I'm a joke quite a bit. Um, and we do have like a, a funny culture in the team and like we maybe take the piss out of each other a little bit sometimes. So if a player isn't used to that, it's pretty tough <laughs> to start, I think. Um, so it will more be just learning to like just getting to know them and what kind of humor they have and how like they fit as a person. And, and that takes longer with some people than others. So if I've had problems with anything, it would more be with that. Um, but generally it just takes a little bit more time then. And then eventually we're, we're all, we all understand each other. So. All right. Uh, Benny, you've been in enough teams actually and, and you learn as a player where there's the side conversations that go on between somebody dissatisfied and a teammate, you know, and it's usually blah, blah, you know, she hates me. I'm better than so-and-so. Don't you agree? All this stuff that's toxic. Um, obviously the coach isn't there usually when this stuff is going on. So the coach can't address it directly and immediately, but how can the coach help avoid that sort of stuff? Benny, you want to start? Or? Yeah, uh, yeah, like I've been in so many teams where, okay, it's a team sport. A lot of things can happen, um, especially professionally. Um, a lot of times for me, when there was a player to player problem, of course, there's like side talk, um, like you said. And, and for me, I had a handful of my teams, really, we were pretty good about, like, if you had a problem, you went directly to that person, or what happened was we kind of called everyone together, and we had it that way, um, but with us, like, it's direct, like, um, as far, I don't want to talk about coach to player, because Lauren goes to me immediately to you and asks you what is going on, um, but player to player, um, I can just think of a funny story between two of our players, like Julie and Kyra in their first season. And Julie just went up to Kyra and was like, do you have a problem with me? And if you met Kyra, she's just, she just is chill and she's there. And, uh, you know, like she has this look like she, she just has kind of a resting face. And, and Julie says, Hey, like, do you have a problem with me? And Kyra just laughing, like, no, I have zero problem with you. And, and once you, start to get like the the personality and character of your teammates like okay you start to learn them but this is just an example of how our team would have like dealt with this problem it's direct to each other it's not like a group whispering on the side and then a group going there and then creating this whole you know cloud of problems um instead it's direct like we just immediately go have the have the discussion and then it's it's over from there yeah yeah, and that's how I would I advise. If someone comes to me and starts to talk about another player in the individual meeting, then I'm like, okay, well, I'll take a little note, but please, why don't you talk to her and then we'll talk about um, that later. And if you need some help on how to navigate the conversation, I'm here. But, like, as a general rule, like, again, it's something we talk about pre-season pre, pre is, like, if, if you have an issue, just, like, confront it directly. doesn't always work, obviously. Like, not everyone will do it immediately. It's a culture that you have to build, but, like, the only way I can say is to do it is to just be constantly giving that feedback, go have that conversation. And then people have to have practice at having that conversation because they're not easy um, and support them through those conversations kind of thing. But like, there's no, there's no quick way to do it. It's just like continually encouraging like face-to-face -face talk because honestly, everybody has a story. Everybody can find a way to respect everybody else, whether you're friends or not, you just can um, and you must. Um, so, uh, again, it doesn't always work and like that's, I mean, we're, we're walking straight into the next, um, the next thing. It's about the recruiting and having good humans and stuff like that. Um, it's like, it's so important, um, for me to get players in that, um, it's, I would say a little easier when I can take foreign players, like, or like foreigner positions, because like, um, I have a very wide range of people to pick from. Um, it's a little harder, like with the locals in Switzerland, there's not a lot of like Swiss players. So um, I, again, I, the conversations I have with them before they come to the team are just like long, <laughs> ask sorts of questions, like try to get their mentality and try to understand if 
they are already exactly kind of where I want them to be. Um, again, nobody really does that kind of mindset work here. So it's very uncommon or like, do I feel like they're going to be open to it? Um, but um, yeah. And in terms of like, I mean, Benny, I think is a really good example because she like, <laughs> if, if I just look at like on like, I, I get a video of Benny from an agent and I go, oh, wow, this little bro is like pretty good. Like, um, I'd really like to have her. Um, she's played Team USA for numerous years. She's played in two leagues that are like typically known to be stronger than ours. Um, like there, there would be a risk in my mind that she comes in with a <laughs> chin up a little bit and thinking she's a little bit better than here. Why am I in Switzerland and, and might not, you know, create um, a great atmosphere. So like I want the best players possible, of course. Um, so my first thing was with her to have a conversation pretty quickly. When I had the conversation, I realized that we would be the best place for her in this moment. Um, and I could also help her with a lot of things as well as her helping me um, with or helping the team, you know. Um, and then, of course, as best I can, people that I trust, um, just talking to them and, like, people that know what I want in a team. Like, can she, will she be an asset at minimum, will she be a nothing? Oh, and she, is she going to be hard work for me? Because I just don't need to bring people in that are hard work when I have a choice of a lot of people. So um, for, for foreigner positions, I'm, I'm really specific and I, I don't usually get it wrong um, about getting good humans in. Um, but, yeah, uh, they, they happen, they exist. Um, and so sometimes uh, you need to have the courage to, to change the team um, and that usually has the biggest impact. Um, which I've had to do a few times, whether it be maybe kick someone off the team or like, yeah, just moving on quietly the next season. Um, but there is a big space in between that. <laughs> I don't just go, you're good or you're not good. See you later. Like it's like, I'm going to try um, to teach you like how to have the mindset that we're looking for, how to like, maybe it's not all about you, like how to be a better human. Like, I mean, I'm talking, I don't want these girls, <laughs> the language people still use in Europe and stuff like, like it's like it's not we're not quite there yet so like I'm trying to also teach them how to be good role models and things like this you know um and have an impact on the world because Jesus we are we are role models um and people do look at us no matter what we want um so like there is a huge space in between me hiring somebody and me giving up like and even when I give up honestly I still I still view it as like a bit of a failure of 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 mine because I, I would like to be able to think that I would have the capacity to teach um, people, everything, but sometimes you can't and not everyone's going to like you and that is just the way it is. So um, that, that like, just don't be a dickhead thing. It's just like a really big thing for us. Like, um, so yeah. And I think it's, I think we do have a pretty good job um, of bringing, teaching people. And like, so as I said, when I said before, I, I tend to take more Americans. I probably, I do it for numerous reasons. One is that I find that like I have girls like we're three for next year. You guys have all been at pretty good programs at like UW and Oregon and Washington State. So like um, I know that they've done a bit of work there. <laughs> they know like what this means, like how, how to be a teammate um, and things like that. And I don't, if I don't have to, um, you know, be fighting with them on how to, how to learn and how to be better in that way, then they, uh, not that I'm employing them as my coaches or anything, but, you know, it's just a really nice influence on the team um, when I'm still trying to, like, help a, a lot of girls to, to come into that mindset. So that would be... Right. Yeah. In that regard, um, obviously, if you get players from, you know, very high-level mm -hmm. college or, you know, teams or whatever, they will have been taught a certain way for mm -hmm. some period of time. Did you ever run into, you know, conflicts of, technique or tactic or anything like that that you you need to work through um so how yeah again that's more the local players i am pretty consistent in like it's again no offense to, to benny or anything but there are a bunch of players <laughs> like like there's a million people you can hire right so i'm pretty consistent in finding the right human the people that are really can probably fit straight into my system and my style of play um and technically would be more towards what i would teach as a base which is like still not super strict um but um yeah like people that i think that like my my local teammates uh, local like players can can kind of look up to so um in that regard um i yeah, i hire people that will fit in pretty quickly um it, i think that if if i can get 
a player that's just maybe not quite as good as somebody else but covers all those things and I'm going to have so much more benefit. So um, that's something I, I really look for. So any, any foreigners that I've taken have, have played a similar system or at least style of volleyball. Um, and then usually I just have to make them a little bit more aggressive. So, so you're basically trying to weed out the players who are going to come in and go, my last team didn't do it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> can I have a high ball? No, you can't. So, yeah. so like, stuff like that. And then, of course, with the locals, it's really just it's starting from scratch, honestly. Like, um, it's just a different philosophy of volleyball here. So um, no matter what age, I don't really care. And I don't, I don't like, um, think that a 25-year-old Swiss player who's new to me versus a 15-year-old Swiss player needs to be taught any differently. I probably need to, to, to restart with just a few things, not necessarily technically, but like, just like this way we're going to play, you know? So, yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about the things we do, which I think probably by the title of the, the talk, people would be more interested in the team building and, and culture stuff. But I just I don't do a lot of it because I just don't think it's that important or it's not as important as um, um, just the constant daily behavior. So um, the captain's thing would be one of them. Um, I don't know that it really made a huge impact, but we made a change from last year to this year. Last year we had three captains, they were voted on, it was a captain group, they were voted on by like um, seven different, God, I'm having a blank, qualities. Um, and, and then we came up with a captain group. Honestly, it was pretty useless. Um, it, it like didn't work very well. Um, <laughs> They, like, I, I'm, it's just the way that I run things. I want everyone to have a voice. So I, I, I found that, like, a couple of people that naturally would be leaders as well because not everyone can be in a, in a captain group and there are, I, we have, like, a lot of, like, natural people that are confident and leaders and stuff would stop talking to me and stuff. Um, it just didn't, it just didn't go very well. Um, so this year, I, we have to have a captain. Um, it must, you must have someone with the bar. Um, so I said that the captain's role is to talk to the referee and perhaps probably do more media stuff. Um, and that was the same captain from last year. She's great. Um, and actually probably exactly what you would want from a captain. Um, theoretically, but like I told her that we're not stripping away any duties, but she's, so good mentally that she was like, no, I think that's a way better idea. I want everyone to have the same say. And like, this was just, it didn't work. So we effectively had no captains this year, even though we do have to have one because someone has to have the bar, just like um, for the rules of volleyball. So. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that's a, something that American uh, observers, I guess, mm -hmm. probably don't really understand as well. Cause in the U S the captain, you know, in some programs it can be a big deal. But officially, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe you go for the coin flip, maybe the person. And you can designate the captain from set to set or, or you know, on the fly to, as to who can go talk to the ref. Mm -hmm. But there's no, you know, it's not like there's external official sort of stuff. Whereas, you know, you go to Europe, you go international, the captain actually has designated responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So, so it, is, it is good to clarify between that sort of person in that role and more general leadership. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, we, we scrapped that and I think that, I mean, it was helpful. Again, I don't know that this had a really big impact, but I liked it. Um, obviously the individual meetings we do, um, they're a really big impact. Um, team building wise, a couple of things that we did um, this year, um, which I stole also from other players in good programs before or things like that. Um, we did a self, self awareness survey um, where, yeah, the, players had some questions they would have to answer and then sit in pairs. And the most, the main goal from that is that like people are sitting in pairs and talking to each other about something. So Benny, do you want to give an example of that? Yeah, this was good. Um, this activity we, we had, I mean, the biggest thing out of it was just to sit and start conversation. That's, that's the big thing is conversation. And that's a big thing for us is communication. Um, so it was cool for me. I obviously was a newcomer this season um, and I just got to kind of sit down with, girls that I hadn't really had so much conversation with. Um, for instance, like our one middle Tina, I sat with her first. Um, and she's, she's a quiet girl, but we got to sit and talk and I got to just hear how she, how she is mentally on the court and, uh, what she sees and, and what she values in her play and, and herself as a, as an athlete. Um, and that was really cool. And that was just kind of the big thing. It, it's super small. And like Lauren said, it's not as effective as day-to-day -day work that we do in the gym, but, 
um, just these small conversation starters where I get to know a little bit about more her, about her and, and what I can do to help her if she's struggling on the court. Yeah. 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 I, I like, honestly, I was a pain in the ass when I was a player. So I, I, I thought this stuff was all fluff. I didn't like it. So just in case there's people like me, I, um, I do front load it and say that I know it's a little bit fluffy, but like, this is why we want to do it. This is why um, we sit down and have a conversation. And honestly, the girls are great. Like maybe I was just a terrible human, but like they're, they, they like it and they, they do pretty well with it. Um, one other thing we did this year, which like worked pretty well, but um, I think worked well for a few different reasons. One was because we, we'd already been together a year, so there was a trust in the team. Um, and again, it's not a magic bullet, but it was something pretty interesting that we did. It um, was like a, a shared like personal experience um, where I saw this off someone else as well, but like, um, the the instruction was to come in and we'll sit in a group and you should talk about something that um, what were my instructions exactly, Benny? It was uh, uh, just to share a, a challenge or a traumatic time you had in, in your life, um, and just to explain, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and just to explain about how you overcame that or how you still are overcoming that. Um, that mm -hmm. yeah. So that was more of like a, an experiment that actually worked really well, like something I wanted to try. I think because we, we all had a pretty good trust between each other, it worked pretty well. I, I, I started off and I said something that would be quite personal to me that I would never, nobody would know about me that I would struggle with on a daily basis. So um, that was like, I think probably a reasonable start again and trying to me show that I'm, I am vulnerable. <laughs> so, uh, and then everyone, it went pretty well. Like I was like pretty shocked at the, how deep the girls went and, Again, that's not like, whoa, we're all bonded because we had one thing where we all told each other our, our deepest, darkest secrets. But, like, the idea is that it, it, um, it created conversations later. Um, for me personally, um, I had a couple of girls that were struggling with the same thing that I would never have known they were and they wanted to talk to me about it. And I think that was just valuable in that way. Um, and I, I don't know because I'm not in the playing group and nor do I want to know what they talk about, but I would assume they had um, conversations after that about that. So. Yeah, I mean, for me, what you said before about um, you know, the title of this thing and the, the team building, culture mm -hmm. development, it, it's, it can be interesting how people think of that because for me, I'm thinking of it the way, and you'll be familiar with this, the way Mark and Sue Gazansky talked about it mm -hmm. in terms of it's the everyday stuff that you yeah. do, the mm -hmm. communication, the way you work, all that sort of stuff, sure. rather than individual events. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to, I mean, we'll probably be on the point of clarifying that. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stage, I mean, that, but <laughs> I just, I thought it was a cool event. It was cool because we, we did it like after a year together. Um, I think it was helpful, but by no means is that like set our culture or anything, but like it was something interesting that people might want to hear about. <laughs> well, and I think that's, that was Sue's point is some teams, that stuff is, is really valuable. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Other teams, they could care less. It doesn't really? matter at all. Yeah. And yeah. You know, you obviously have to, as a coach have to kind of figure out which team you've got mm -hmm. um, to, do, to make that decision and not just say, hey, we want to go do a ropes course because that's team building. Well, yeah. that might not work for your group. Or maybe it will work brilliantly. Just can't say one, you know, one thing fits all. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. And for me, I've, I've been through all of that stuff. I also was a player that kind of thought it was a little bit like fluff. Um, a lot of it has been fluffed to me, um, but, uh, like Navy SEAL training, I hated, I don't know why we had to, you know, go to four, four miles through sand with 50 pound sandbags. No, like I was not about that, but I had a, a, you know, situation where we had our activity and, and one of the girls also had a side conversation with me that she had, um, also been in a similar situation I was um, and that kind of just built a little bit of trust there um, so it's not a magic bullet like you can do all the activities you want it still doesn't mean you're going to win every game or win a championship um, but it can help and I think you know it's trial and error and seeing uh, and seeing what you what will work and what won't work yeah and my biggest advice is like just like front load it if you just walk in and say okay we're gonna try this might be terrible yeah <laughs> But let's have a crack. Generally, if you've got trust from the girls, they're, they're just going, 
cool, we're going to have a crack. And they're like, gee, Lauren, that was terrible. I'm like, oof, I know. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. You know, we Throw move on. away and then you try something else. Like, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. I, I just, I tend to, like, front load everything and, like, just approach it. And I ask them, like, what do you think about this? Like, um, and I think that in the end then um, people aren't grumpy. They have to do something. Um, <laughs> and they, they, they see why maybe I want to do it. and, and Or they can just tell me that's a freaking terrible idea, Lauren. I'll be like, oh, you're probably right. So, like, I, I do I do talk to the team, like, why we want to do it. And I don't just, like, have things just to have them, you know. Um, yeah. And, the well, other and, and if, it, it, if it is crap and you guys joke about it afterwards, then it's something you can joke about forever. Yeah, exactly. And it just becomes one of those things that kind of connects you inadvertently. Right. So like, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I think, yeah, we've, we've done a pretty good job here creating like an environment by no means is everything like happy Lala in this team. Like we're here to win, we're here to win gold medals. Our goals are win four gold medals. Um, Cause we play in four different competitions. One of them is so unattainable. It's ridiculous, but like it's still our goal. You know? um, um, and we have really high performance standards, but if you can't go in there and, and have fun every day, like, um, it's just terrible. So once we've set that work ethic, like it's, we, we have a pretty nice time. Like this year, I don't even know if I should tell people this story because like it makes me look like I have no coaching credibility whatsoever, but I will. So this year it was for the, we played a game. We were in Lugano, which is down south. It's the only place you have to travel to in Switzerland. Um, we played a five set match. We are a team that should win these games probably, but they played out of their damn skin. Like, so we went to five sets. Um, came back from 13-10 down and won the game. And that was the second game of our quarterfinal. The next day we had the semifinal of the cup there as well. Um, and uh, obviously we, we, poof, we just got away with not having to come back the next week to Lugano in the best of five series. So we were pretty happy about that. And now we have the semifinal of the cup, um, which is uh, it's so important because to be in the cup final, it's, it's huge in Switzerland, you know. And I walked in and I always go at like five past or 55 minutes before the match starts, I always go in the locker room. I open the door and there's the national anthem of Australia playing and all the girls, because they're idiot Americans, sorry girls, they're all standing there with their hand on their heart and like the, the Australian national anthem's playing. And then I'm like, oh my God. And they start going, Australia, and, which is not how you sing the Australian national anthem. Nobody knew the words. And I was just like, <laughs> as soon as I walked in, I was like, all right, okay, well, <laughs> I wish if another coach saw this, they'd be like, geez, Lauren, you've just, you've lost it. You've lost your team. But actually it's the opposite. Like they're so loose and relaxed. And like, I know that they're going to go out after that and just like absolutely destroy. And they did. So like, it was, it was just stuff like that that happens when you, I think when you end up having this environment and it's just not that where we are working so hard every day and the, the, the standards are so high. Um, but if, if you can't walk in and someone sing the national anthem, even though they don't know how, um, then <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. I don't know why they chose to do that in that moment. Might have been we'll to send you the video, John. <laughs> Standing. It'll go viral, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I don't know if I have anything else, Benny, do you No, I think you, you hit it on the on the nail. All right. Um, just for those uh, we did get a post of that video. Turns out it's Texas A and M. Oh, cool. Not not the singing video. No. No, no. Yeah, nobody has that. Uh, right. Again, yeah. but, uh, it's on my phone, so <laughs> I'm the holder. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, this is this is the the attack that I mentioned earlier. The the girl from Texas saying they're ripping a ball from 25 feet off the court. Nice. Um, we do have a question for you, Lauren, from Enzo, who asks if you have any advice so that you can improve since you just started coaching and is young. Just like advice in general. General advice for a young coach. Oof. Um, go, go hang out with some other coaches. And I believe Enzo is pretty close to somewhere around me. So he's very welcome to my practices and to come and chat to me. So the more people you can chat to and listen to, um, the more you can sort of like either validate, validate ideas you have or just completely scrap them and just sort of start to get a direction. I think like nothing I, we talked about, I've talked about this with Benny. Um, none of us invent volleyball, <laughs> so it's already been invented. So all we're doing is um, trying to coach it a little bit better. Um, so like I, I'm yeah, speak to as many people as you as you can, and like um, try and visit practices and, and stuff like that. I get a bunch of ideas when I, even if I go into practices and I'm like, oh, that is terrible. Like still, I'm learning what not to do. You know, so sorry so to anyone. No, but really, like there's a lot of things as a player that I remember going, oh, okay well, this is what players didn't like or stuff like that, you know. So, like, just, just to be around the volleyball and more coaches. So, um, 
yeah. And on that as well, like anyone who wants to chat me and, and contact me really can do that by any social media possible. I'm under my normal name everywhere. So, yeah. um, um, I love, I love so people will know, just to back this up, Lauren and I met just about three years ago in Poland when Mark was doing his first Aussie camp. And basically she was there for a week just taking notes. I mean, literally, you were yeah. just taking notes the whole time. Yes, that was actually, that was my job and I was doing it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like the, the best the best way. Like, and I, I still have a lot of things I learned from that week that I, I take into my, my daily practice. So. All right, Kristen wants to know who's been the most influential person in your career? What has been the most influential uh, bit of advice you've ever had gotten? <laughs> um, oof. Geez, she could have sent me that before because I'm pretty sure I know her. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, influential person. Honestly, I don't. I'm not. I've I've never been able to answer these questions very well. Um, what I what I can say on that is that I um I tend to to take a lot of my experience as a player and how I felt um as a player when when coaches were doing certain things or or the way we were training and and stuff like that. Um. Um. I I love like um. David Manzadi now the way he has the Italian team playing like I think it's amazing like I love how he's innovating stuff and I think it's it's awesome so I, I like, like to watch a lot of his games um I don't know that in the women's volleyball there's a lot of people kind of being as innovative as like maybe in the men's like as players like men kind of take that on themselves a little bit more than women something we can talk about next Wednesday um and yeah, probably um, the best piece of advice or like a quote was probably from her husband. It's that trust is consistency of behavior and I, I have to hold myself to that a lot. So. Okay, yeah. good, got it. I think that's all the questions we have right now, unless people want to shoot them in. Uh, Liam thinks that maybe you made one of those bad sounds <laughs> at one of his trainings. Liam was my <laughs> assistant for a year and he ran. <laughs> so he's fine. I learned a lot from him. <laughs> Uh, actually, this is a question for um, Amanda, uh, Benny, because uh, we've got somebody who's looking to get better at coaching Libros. Okay. So I'm trying to set up a conversation so that he can pick somebody's brain. Who would you put on the other side of that conversation? Who, what coach that you've had or have seen work does a really good job training Libros? Um, you know... <laughs> I'm like, <clears throat> oh, fuck. no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, Libros are a pretty, you know, underestimated position, I would say. Um, well, to that lot, point, he asked people, yeah. and they basically say, go hire a new Libro if you don't like the one you've got. So, yeah, okay. We're looking for some, uh, something who, somebody's going to say something more useful than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I really. My first coach, uh, Jim Moore at the University of Oregon, he was the first coach that kind of like planted the seed of thinking about volleyball in a different way. Um, he also was the first coach that kind of like brought me in and said like, this is what, how we can dissect a server, a server's arms and how we can, we can, um, you know, just draw a map basically of all their tendencies. And we really like took it down to a science and like, our service eve was insane. Like there's video on YouTube of me passing 75% of the court with one other passer. Like I knew every that every person in the Pac-12 where they served, what their range was, everything. So he was kind of the first coach that like loved uh, reception and 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 volleyball and and was kind of a nerd of volleyball, but took it in such a different way that I had never thought about it before. Um, so he was he was my first like coach like that, and Lauren is also like that. Like we really are like beating different stuff off of each other all the time about like what we can do different, and and this idea of that there's not just one way to do something. Um, and I've had a handful of coaches that there is one one way, the right way, um, their their road or the high road. Um, yeah, but with liberos like I just really respect coaches that understand and respect the position um, and give that player a voice to be 
uh, in charge of the back row, kind of the quarterback of the back row. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and that, that, that's, answer that. Like, yeah, that's really important because she just said something that, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't have had the skill to do yet, you know, so I've got a player in if I hadn't listened to her and known that she had this skill and she's learned it somewhere else, I wouldn't have been able to capitalise and have, like, that extra thing in my scouting or learn about how to do it myself better or that she could sit there and teach my, my second libro um, how to do that. So, like, I just, just like, listen to your players. They're pretty smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. No new questions came in. So uh, unless either of you have any sort of final thoughts you want to put out there. Nope. Just thanks for doing these. I've, I've been yeah. watching all of them and uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks yeah. for having me. This was awesome. And thanks Lauren again. All right. Great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for everybody who's, who's come out and thanks for the questions. Yes. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.